to everyone out here with us at Crossword. Crossword aims to be a point of social and cultural interaction, a place where authors and poets hold court. And this evening, I invite you one and all to kindly put your hands together and let's receive Chetan Bhagat, the author to the title, What Young India Wants, being published by Rupa Publications. We also have with us, and I'm very happy and delighted to have you with us at Crossword in conversation very shortly, a very elegant and stylish fashion designer and Masaba Gupta. Thank you so much for joining us, Masaba. The very talented actress, Shezan Padamsi, thank you very much, Shezan, for joining us. And the head of Rupa Publications, Mr. Kapish Mehra, thank you very much. I'd like to start off this evening before we get into the conversations and find out a little bit more with introspection, what young India wants to the eyes of Chetan Bhagat. A few words about the title. In his latest book, What Young India Wants, Chetan asks hard questions, demands answers and presents solutions for a better and prosperous India. Well, there's a lot more that we're going to find out as we go through this, but I'd like to share a few words about the author himself. Chetan Bhagat is the author of five novels, all of which have gone on to become blockbuster sellers ever since they were released. They have also been adapted into major Bollywood films in addition to being best-selling. Chetan is a motivational speaker and a columnist. He was named one of the most influential people among the hundred in the world of Time magazine and also one of the world's 100 most creative people in business by Fast Company USA. Congratulations to that, Chetan. <laughs> Presently, he lives in Mumbai with his wife, Anusha, an ex-classmate from IIMA, and uh, his twin boys, Sham and Ishan. Do we have them here with us? Somewhere around the corner, yeah. So thank you very much, Chetan, for joining us. To get the ball rolling this evening, firstly, on behalf of the publishers, Rupa, I'd like to invite Mr. Kapish Mehra to share a few words with us this evening. Uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction. A very good, good, good evening to the honorable panelists, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there are various ways to begin a book launch. Uh, describing the book, talking about the author are one of the many. But I would probably step back and take a moment to reflect on the journey of Chetan Bhagat. A journey that started seven and a half years ago. A journey that started with Five Point Sun One that led to one night at the call center, that led to three mistakes, that led to two states, Revolution 2020 and now What Young India Wants. A journey that has led to six million copies sold over the last seven and a half years. Ladies and gentlemen, six million copies is a very big number in India. Uh, published in 17 languages across the globe. Uh, regular books are published in one or two. 17 languages across the globe, uh, these titles have been published. So I think this deserves a big hand for Chetan. So congratulations. Especially we've been waiting through a couple of hours to get hold of Chetan. Well, I'm going to surrender him to you very shortly, but not before I invite Chetan along with our very special guest at the table to kindly get your hands onto the covers and let's unwrap what young India wants with much thought this evening. So all you avid readers, on behalf of Crossword, here presenting to you what young India wants from Chetan Bhagat, published by Rupa Publications. Congratulations, Chetan. And now it's time to get a little bit more introspective and get into the shoes of Chetan Bhagat and find about what India wants. So firstly, before I hand it over as an author, this is the first question to get it rolling, Chetan. What does India really want uh, through the eyes of youngsters as you see it? And uh, you've been writing a lot of romantic stories and finally turning on the lights into more social issues and uh, political uh, dimensions. Let's hear it from you. I've gotten into trouble for saying something like this. But what Young India wants is basically a good job and a really good girlfriend or boyfriend. That's really what most people want. Of course, I'd like to say they want a better country and cleaner system. But that Mary Nokri and Mary Chokri is the biggest driver. And of course, for girls, it's the Chokra or and if you are no, of a different orientation, then I mean, I don't want to get into all those politically correct things because I have got into trouble in Delhi. By, but I'm just saying 
that is something which people often ignore everybody tries to be morally uh, you know upright and say yo no young people want change and young people are very different now and now they protest and things like that it's not like that we see they protest and sometimes they don't protest so i'm presenting to you a framework which is very important for anybody who works with the youth or the youth themselves whether it's an activist, filmmaker, writer, anything must understand. The youth wants their life to be good. They are looking for the good life, they are interested in themselves. And all social issues are connected to this. It's not like socially, I have written about social issues. Someone will say, if they want, you know, all they want is love and job, then why have you written about all these social issues? Because to have a good job, you need a good economy. You know, to have a good job, you need good schools. To have a good job, you need foreign investment to come in. You need good English education so our people can get jobs in global companies. Things like that will lead to this. And to get a good girlfriend or boyfriend or get a romantic partner, you need a lot of individual freedom. You know, so you need people to be allowed to marry whoever they want without any societal pressure that you can marry this person, cannot marry this person. Or people to do whatever they want with their free time, rather than moral policing that keeps on happening in this country. So those will lead to another range of social issues that come. But unless and until a movement is catering to the core needs of the youth, which is to, to do well in life, it will not work. And it's, I don't judge it, I don't call it selfish. And if it's selfish, then it's good to be selfish. Because we want young India to be very aspirational, we want them to be very rich. Only then the country will become rich. So in that context, I've written what Young India wants. And today, I have the kind of panel I have, I have a fashion designer, writer, actor, director, four different people in different creative fields. We are not here to discuss politics only. And, and I've already done that in Delhi, so I don't want to do it here. So we are here to really discuss things which really matter to the youth. Not just what sounds good for me to say, because it's nice to say that, you know, let's talk about equality or secularism. Let's talk about what young people really want. Thank you very much, Chetan. We're going to get more from Chetan and we're going to dig in a little bit more. But uh, do permit us, we've got some special guests out here at the table. I'm going to begin with Masaba. A young, established fashion designer and of course simply growing. The question to you is going to be, Masaba, how does it feel being a young girl out here with an established brand and business and uh, what do you see the prospects for young India, especially for girls? Well, um, I think girls today are far more aware uh, of their surroundings, of what they want to be, who they want to be. Uh, they're not easily fooled. They're more practical about what they want in life. I mean, chasing your dream is great. Being determined and focused, hard work is great. But at the same time, I think they're more practical their approach uh, of life. And of course, young girls have now realized that if you want to be independent and you want to have, uh, you know, the future of a possible freedom at some point, then you need to have the power to earn money. So you see a lot of, you know, housewives who probably never worked and young girls who get married at the age of 18 and 19 now starting off from their own homes and, you know, doing little businesses just to keep themselves going and to earn that respect. So, um, as I said, I have a lot of friends who uh, I studied with and who got married in the first semester and quit the course of fashion. But at the same time, uh, I think they didn't ever give up hope that there is hope for them to work out of even a small, you know, like a 500 square feet space. It's just, it's just about following what you need and, you know, going what you're after to earn that kind of respect. Okay. We also have with us another charming young lady in Shazan. Share with us something about today's youth, the understanding of good looks and the way they present themselves, you know personally and practically very physically. So how do they find their appearance important today when they carry themselves? I think today's youth is, uh, I would say, um, I mean it is It is a good thing that uh, everybody, uh, you know, uh, when people go out, uh, you'll find a lot of people, you know, taking pictures and putting it on Twitter and Facebook where in the generation of social media and the pictures go everywhere. So everybody does want to be well turned out. That doesn't mean you have to go out with, you know, cakes of makeup or layers or anything like that. 
um, but everybody does want to look good on a daily basis and also a lot of people for job interviews are looking for people who do speak well, are well turned out, well groomed. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of, I think a little more emphasis uh, in today's generation on, uh, on looks for sure. Thank you. Special guest, a big thank you to Masawa, thank you, Masawa. Shazan and Abhishek, you made this a wonderful evening and we've got a little token of appreciation from Crossword. So, thank you very much. Cheers on this and guys, I have signed the books already because I need the queuing now. So, the books are signed and if you, I'll be around for a little bit but the books that are there are already signed for you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Once.